The Thermaltake A500 Aluminum TG Mid-Tower features a sleek aluminum front panel and two 4mm tempered glass panels for breathtaking views. Enjoy 420 and 360 rad support at the front and top respectively, and breeze through installation with a dismantleable modular design. Step up your case game with the A500 Aluminum TG and click on the link below for more info. What's going on guys? I once again have dwarfed myself with a large pile of hardware, um, but that's okay. This is an exciting video. Actually, I guess it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it, I'm gonna say it's exciting. I feel really bad that I haven't filled you guys in in a long time, haven't given you an update on the whereabouts of Hotline 2.0. So I thought I would do this video where I reveal the core specs that I will for sure be using for this system and uh, do a little preliminary build without the custom water cooling involved because all that hardware still needs, needs to be sourced, but I have most of the core components that will be going in to this uh, highly awaited successor. Some of these parts are not finalized and some of them are, so I'm gonna quickly go over each one and uh, describe what's what. Let's go ahead and start from this side. We've got two 2080 Ti, RTX 2080 Ti's from NVIDIA. These are both Founders Edition cards, so they've got reference PCBs, uh, which will make it really easy to fit on some custom blocks in the near future. These are now the fastest gaming graphics cards on the market, and when paired together in two-way SLI, they will be the fastest GPU configuration you can possibly buy if you're talking about gaming, which is important because Hotline 2.0 is built is being built exclusively for a gaming experience. I don't need it to do awesome editing and rendering like I did with the original Hotline because I already have editing systems for that. So all the hardware you see here has been handpicked to deliver the highest possible frame rates in game, which is why these cards are so critical to this build. Now the motherboard I'm going with is the Asus ROG Maximus 11 formula, which features the Z390 chipset, and that supports, uh, of course, all of Intel's latest 9th gen core processors. I really like this motherboard. I was kind of blown away by the aesthetic. It's just, it's right up my alley. I like it, obviously that's subjective. But apart from that, it does have an EK backed VRM water block on it, which I feel like I kind of have to use. It'd be sort of a slap in the face if I didn't, especially if I'm trying to get some gnarly overclocks on it. Uh, and it's got no shortage of RGB and just endless connectivity. I think it's gonna be a fantastic motherboard. You might notice that I'm not going the high-end desktop route, uh, either with Threadripper or Skylight like X. Um, that's because I think as a gaming PC, the, the only CPU that's really qualified for this job, if I'm going balls to the wall, is the Core i9-9900K. Now you'll notice that I don't have a 9900K with me right now, so this is a stand-in. This is an 8700K from the 8th gen, but um, it's gonna be very easy to swap out and stuff. I'm not actually hooking up, like I said, any custom water cooling hardware today. So this is just a fill-in, uh, but that eight core 16 thread processor is hopefully just gonna annihilate all the games we throw at it. And it should also reduce as much bottlenecking as possible with these two RTX 2080 Ti's. For system memory, I have a kit here of HyperX uh, Predator RGB DDR4 at 2933. This is just a 16 gigabyte kit, two by eight gig sticks. This is also kind of a fill-in, but kind of not because I am planning to use Predator RGB for this build, um, but I think a more substantial kit is, is necessary for, uh, for a system like this. So I'll probably get four DIMMs in there uh, just to populate all those slots and uh, it kind of looks a little bit nicer too. And we'll probably go with 32 gigs. I, I don't think I need anything more than that for a gaming PC specifically, um, but I really do like like the look of these DIMMs. And if you remember from Hotline 1.0, I was also using HyperX Predator uh, DDR4, but that was the non-RGB version, so this is gonna pay sort of homage to, uh, to the original build. The official boot drive for this system is gonna be the Samsung 970 Evo M.2 NVMe SSD, 250 gig capacity. I usually don't go much over 250 gigs for my boot drive, I just don't need it. Uh, however, as you might have guessed, I will also be adding additional storage to this system later down the line uh, because 250 is clearly not gonna cut it, it's just for the boot drive. Uh, moving on here, we've got the XP 1200M from Gigabyte. This is actually their Extreme Series, Extreme Gaming Series, uh, 1200 watt unit, 80 plus platinum, fully modular cables. It's actually a great unit I've been using it for testing quite a bit. Uh, it's been super reliable so far. You can see that I don't have any custom sleeved extensions on hand right now. Uh, I'm still waiting on those. Um, those will look really cool and they're all done, but for now I'm probably just gonna have to use uh, the stock cables of this power supply for this build, which is fair warning, the cables are gonna look kind of crappy. And then we also have a cooler, the H110i. This is again, another placeholder because we don't have the custom water cooling hardware in here yet. Um, this is a 280 millimeter liquid AIO from Corsair. And it's a, it's a fantastic unit. I'm not gonna talk too much about it because we're not gonna be putting it in the final build. And last but certainly not least, we have a case picked out for Hotline 2.0. This is the Fantex Evolve X. This case absolutely blew me away at Computex this year. Um, I love all the, the improvements that they've made to the front panel with the RGB lighting and a 
additional openings for airflow, and there's just a ton of other features crammed in, into this thing. It's very conducive for custom water cooling. It's got tons of radiator support. And initially when I picked this case out and decided this is the case I want, um, I was planning to do a dual system inside of Hotline 2.0 because you can actually mount a mini ITX board up at the top of this chassis, but then I realized that would take away from the radiator support for the primary build, and I think cooling is very important to prioritize in a system like this. So I'm gonna be forgoing uh, the dual system for a single system, just more traditional and uh, probably simpler that way, but uh, very excited to be using this case nonetheless. Those are all the official core specs, guys, for Hotline 2.0. I'm super excited. If you'd like to find links to all this stuff, you can check the description below. But without further ado, let's get cracking on this early stage assembly. There she blows, Hotline 2, in her very, very early and unfinished stage. Um, it's powerful. In fact, this is the most powerful or the fastest gaming PC that money can buy right now, just days before the launch of the 9900K. This thing's a beast, but it's not pretty per se. I wouldn't say the aesthetics are quite on point yet because obviously there's there's still much to be done, especially when you've got those nasty PCIe cables. I did manage to find a cheaper extension for the 24 pin, so that doesn't look as bad. Still not great though. And uh, of course we've, you know, I, I didn't really focus too much on cable management here because, well, this is a very early build. We also don't have any color coordination in order. As I mentioned in the last update video, Hotline 2.0 will retain the same fuchsia pink color, but we may be adding a splash of teal into the mix. Whether that's gonna be actually uh, teal painted components or just an RGB thing uh, is still undecided. You can also see we have a hard drive post error code. Uh, that's probably just because we don't have a physical connected hard drive, so nothing to worry about there. The motherboard looks absolutely killer in this case, and I think it pairs really nicely with that HyperX kit, although I do need two extra dims to, to really complete the picture. Uh, also something to be aware of, the reflective material on the VRM heat, uh, water block right there, it's highly prone to scratching, and I did scratch up uh, this one on the left here with my finger and a microfiber cloth. Both of those things uh, were enough to, to put some scratches in there, so something to be aware of for sure. Also, the lower half of the board isn't very visible right now because it's got the graphics cards in there. Once we swap those out for uh, the single slot GPU water blocks, I think it'll be a lot more visible, all that uh, beautiful RGB underneath. Additionally, we've got a cutout for our power supply here. Looks really nice. The sticker on the power supply, however, not so nice. So I'll probably have to heat gun that off at some point just to clean it up a bit. Uh, the cable management was fantastic. On the back side, like with those covers, they're completely toolless and they, they, they pop on and off very easily. It's a really fun case to build in and it didn't even feel like I was cramming that much hardware into it because the ease of use in almost every area. Uh, the radiator installation was just really smooth with that removable bracket. You can also tell from this camera's perspective that this is not the longest case in the world. It's, it's not very deep, so it might be a challenge cramming all the custom water cooling hardware that we need into this chassis, but I think we can still get away with probably a 360 at the front and the top. We'll just have to double check what kind of width we can get away with. At any rate, guys, I'm really excited to get this project underway, get it moving and stuff, and I hope you are too. Thank you so much for watching this video. Leave me any feedback down in the comments below and toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it. You can also check me out on Floatplane if you'd like to watch my videos a whole week early without ads for three bucks a month. I'll put a link for that in the video description. Till next time, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.